Elon Musk's mother, May Musk. You'll get very hurt and very sad, and then you need to make a plan to get out of that. And it might mean you're financially strapped, you're scared, you don't know what the future's going to hold, but at the moment it's pretty horrible. May Musk has been a quiet but steady figure in her son's life, watching as he scaled the heights of fame and fortune. Known for her elegance and resilience, she has always been supportive, but largely kept her personal thoughts private. Now she has finally opened up, sharing insights that reveal a whole new perspective on her son and his journey. He's very sweet and he's brilliant. At 76, Elon Musk's mother finally admits what we all suspected, the Holderman grandparents. To learn why May waited for such a long time before opening up, we need to have insight into her upbringing and life beforehand. Elon Musk's grandparents, Wynne and Dr. Joshua Holderman, were the ones who truly set the foundation for a life filled with adventure and ambition. Wynne and Joshua weren't just ordinary people, they were explorers, pioneers and individuals driven by curiosity and courage. Their story offers insight into the values and experiences that would shape future generations, including May and then Elon. Wynne Holderman was known for her kindness and practical nature. She had a strong sense of family and was deeply committed to raising her children with good values. Wynne was the quieter one between the two, but her resilience and support provided a stable foundation for their adventurous lifestyle. Joshua, on the other hand, was a bold and charismatic figure. Born in Canada, he grew up with a strong sense of independence and curiosity, which led him to study chiropractic medicine and become a successful chiropractor. His adventurous spirit wasn't just limited to his professional life, he had a deep-rooted passion for exploration and discovery that defined much of his life. Wynne and Joshua married in the 1920s in Canada. They started a family during a time of economic hardship, and like many families, they faced financial challenges. Joshua's chiropractic practice provided for them, but it was their frugal and self-sufficient lifestyle that helped them make ends meet. The Haldemans believed in teaching their children practical skills, often involving them in household chores and activities that emphasized hard work and responsibility. The Haldemans raised their children in a unique, open-minded environment. Education was important to them, but they also valued life experiences and encouraged curiosity. Joshua wanted his children to be aware of the world beyond their immediate surroundings. He introduced them to different cultures, books, and ideas. One of the most defining aspects of the Haldemans' lives was their decision to move to South Africa in the early 1950s. Leaving Canada behind was a significant choice, especially considering they were uprooting their family to move halfway across the world. But for Joshua and Wynne, South Africa represented a new adventure and an opportunity to live a life that was different from the norm. One of Joshua's biggest passions was aviation. He had obtained his pilot's license in Canada and after moving to South Africa, continued to pursue this interest. Joshua was not content to fly over familiar landscapes. He wanted to explore new territories and seek out places few had seen before. Joshua would take his family on flights across the Kalahari Desert, a vast and mostly uninhabited area that stretches across several African countries. For the Holderman children, these flights were more than just thrilling adventures. They provided a sense of perspective on the world, showing them the beauty of remote landscapes and instilling in them a sense of resilience and adaptability. Growing up in Canada, May's early life was filled with rich experiences and strong values, and she was shaped by her family and surroundings in Canada. Born on April 19, 1948, May grew up in Regina with her parents and her four siblings. The Holderman household was anything but ordinary. Her parents' adventurous spirit and dedication to self-sufficiency influenced her deeply, embedding in her a resilience and independence that would carry her through life. Growing up, 
May was encouraged to take her education seriously. Her parents instilled in her a sense of responsibility and curiosity, valuing both academic knowledge and practical skills. In Regina, May attended local schools where she developed a love for learning. Though her early years weren't defined by luxury, the Holderman family placed a high value on education and self-improvement. Wynne and Joshua always encouraged their children to think critically, ask questions, and understand the world in a deeper way. May was a diligent student, often immersing herself in books and the subjects that piqued her interest, something she later saw in Elon. But what was very different between the two is that May had a much more happy upbringing, but more on that later. Though her parents valued adventure, they balanced it with a strong focus on education, pushing their children to excel in school. May was not only encouraged to study, but also to pursue activities outside of traditional academics. Joshua's adventurous spirit influenced the entire family, and May was no exception. He believed in exposing his children to experiences beyond the everyday. He often took the family on explorations, instilling in May a love for nature and a willingness to embrace the unknown. Flying also became a regular part of their life, giving May and her siblings a unique perspective on the world's beauty. Growing up in Canada, May had a close-knit group of friends. Though her family was unique in many ways, May's early friendships were fairly typical. She and her friends spent time exploring their surroundings, playing games, and enjoying the simple pleasures of childhood. The values she learned at home often influenced her interactions with friends, as she brought a strong sense of curiosity and enthusiasm to her social life. May was known among her friends for her determination and adventurous spirit, traits that she inherited from her parents. While other children might have found the Holderman's lifestyle unusual, May took pride in her family's unique approach to life. Her friends often admired her for her courage and independence. Moving to South Africa. May Musk's life took a defining turn when she moved to South Africa with her family during her teenage years. Originally from Canada, she was already familiar with the thrill of exploration and hard work, values instilled by her adventurous parents. But South Africa would introduce new layers to her life, influencing her path in education, independence, and understanding of the world around her. Her upbringing had prepared her well to embrace this new environment. Was their move to South Africa the first cog in what would recently unravel as May finally admitted what we all suspected? Moving to South Africa was no small change for May. She arrived with her family in Pretoria, a vibrant city filled with diverse cultures, beautiful landscapes, and complex social dynamics. The new surroundings required her to adapt to unfamiliar customs, languages, and social structures. Life in Pretoria allowed May to see a wider range of human experiences than she'd been exposed to in Canada. It was a time of societal tension and transformation in South Africa, and living there gave her unique insights into the realities of a country grappling with profound political and social changes. Observing these dynamics firsthand left a lasting impact on her. She quickly learned to navigate the contrast between different communities, deepening her understanding of perseverance and the importance of education. May's parents placed a high value on learning, so when she arrived in South Africa, her education remained a top priority. She enrolled in school in Pretoria, focusing on her studies with diligence that set her apart. South Africa's education system at the time had its own distinct structure, but May's enthusiasm for learning helped her adjust smoothly. In Pretoria, she attended an academically rigorous high school, where her natural curiosity and determination to excel served her well. She was passionate about the sciences and math, and she developed a keen interest in subjects that would later shape her academic and professional pursuits. School wasn't just about getting good grades for May, it was about challenging herself, understanding the world around her, and building a foundation for the future. This drive led her to the University of Pretoria, one of South Africa's premier institutions where she pursued a bachelor's degree in dietetics. 
Her focus on dietetics was a natural extension of her curiosity about health, science, and practical ways to improve quality of life. Dietetics combined her love for science with her interest in nutrition, aligning with her desire to understand how the human body works and how it can be nurtured. This degree would later play a crucial role in her career, although she didn't yet realize how impactful it would become. As a university student, May found herself surrounded by a diverse range of students and professors from all over the country. She made the most of her time at the University of Pretoria, where she wasn't just focused on academic achievements, but also on gaining real-world experience. The academic environment was competitive and challenging, but it motivated her to push herself harder. During her time in university, May also started connecting with the health community in Pretoria. She networked with professionals, attended seminars, and participated in discussions on health and nutrition, which gave her early exposure to her future field. Modeling career. May Musk's journey into the world of modeling was not something she set out to pursue from a young age. Rather, it was a path that opened up naturally, almost as if modeling had chosen her. Her unique look and strong presence caught her attention early, and her determination transformed that initial interest into a long, enduring career. Modeling came into her life quite unexpectedly when, as a teenager, she participated in local beauty contests in South Africa. Although her interests were more academically focused, she was open to exploring different opportunities and saw these contests as a fun, adventurous experience. During one of these competitions, May caught the eye of local modeling agents who recognized her potential. She soon began modeling for small assignments around South Africa, which, while modest, gave her a glimpse into the industry. She took up these early jobs with an open mind, balancing her growing interest in modeling with her academic pursuits in nutrition. While most models at the time entered the industry in their teens, May's focus was divided. Her education, was her priority, and she continued her studies, eventually earning both a bachelor's and master's degree in the field. Modeling, at this stage, was a way to support her education, offering financial stability and a creative outlet. May took on assignments that allowed her to pay for her schooling, blending her two worlds in a way that reflected her adaptable and pragmatic approach to life. Her ability to balance both worlds was no small feat. Modeling required her to be presentable, poised, and adaptable. While her academic life demanded focus, precision, and intellectual engagement. Yet, these two roles complemented each other. Modeling gave her confidence and public poise, while her studies sharpened her discipline and drive. But if she was so mature and confident, why did she wait for so long to break the silence? As her experience in the modeling world grew, so did her reputation. May was known for her professionalism and poise on set, qualities that helped her stand out in a field dominated by young, ambitious models. She took assignments across South Africa, from print ads to small fashion shows, steadily building her portfolio. In her late 20s, May married and started a family. At this point, many women in modeling would typically move on from the industry, especially if they had families to support. But May's resilience and unique outlook kept her connected to the world of modeling. Even with the responsibilities of raising three children, she found ways to continue working as a model, taking on freelance assignments that allowed her to balance her roles as a mother, professional dietitian, and model. May's career took an unexpected turn when she decided to return to modeling decades later with a renewed focus. In her 40s, she saw an opportunity to re-enter the industry on her own terms. This time, May's approach was different. She wasn't modeling to support her education or as a secondary pursuit. She was a qualified dietitian with a successful practice, yet she felt that her journey in modeling wasn't complete. It was unusual for someone her age to be considered for modeling roles, but May's confidence and sense of purpose made her stand out. Meeting and marrying Errol Musk. In the late 1960s, May Musk was a young woman living in South Africa. She had an inquisitive mind, a passion for science, and a budding career in dietetics and modeling. 
Her life was full of ambition and curiosity, and she was equally focused on her personal and professional goals. Her studies in health and nutrition, along with her work in modeling, were helping her to build an independent identity. It was during this period, in her early 20s, that she met Errol Musk, a South African engineer. This would be, depending on how you look, the best or worst meeting in her life, because she had her three kids with him, but endured what nobody should ever experience. South Africa in the 1970s had a tight social scene, especially for young professionals like May and Errol. As they began spending time together, they found that they shared similar values and dreams, which formed the foundation of their connection. Their relationship evolved gradually, with May finding Errol's intelligence and his engineering work fascinating. They spent many of their early days together engaged in conversations about their goals and visions for the future. For May, it was refreshing to connect with someone who seemed to understand and appreciate her dedication to her career and education. In the early years, their relationship blossomed as they supported each other's pursuits. For May, Errol's support was crucial. He respected her career aspirations in a society where women often face challenges balancing family and professional life. Their marriage, however, was a major step for May. She was balancing a career that was just beginning to take shape, and marriage brought new expectations. May had always been independent and dedicated to her personal growth, so she wanted her life with Errol to include room for her own ambitions. In Errol, she saw a partner who could offer support while she continued pursuing her goals. The early years of their marriage were filled with both excitement and challenges. May and Errol became parents to their first child, and their roles quickly shifted to include new responsibilities. May's role as a mother was a natural fit for her nurturing personality, but she was still passionate about her career in dietetics and modeling. In the beginning, May tried to juggle her work and family life, often finding creative ways to manage her time. As the years went on, May and Errol expanded their family, welcoming more children. However, the challenges of balancing family life with career ambitions began to create strain in the marriage. May's dedication to her career and Errol's demanding work schedule left them both with no time to nurture their relationship. Over time, their lives became more centered on managing their family and professional obligations than on each other. The relationship that had once been filled with mutual admiration and shared dreams started facing new pressures. As the years went by, May and Errol's relationship grew increasingly strained. The differences in their personalities and priorities became more pronounced and they began to drift apart. Eventually, May made the difficult decision to separate from Errol. The separation was a turning point in her life, marking a new beginning. Some even say that she reinvented herself as she had endured a lot for her kids during marriage, the Musk children. Growing up, May's children were surrounded by her example of hard work and dedication. She instilled in them the importance of curiosity and determination, traits that would later define their journeys. Life as a single mother wasn't easy, but May's fierce independence and dedication to her career and family provided her children with a solid foundation. Recently, she admitted what we all suspected for a long time, but more on that later. Elon was a unique child from an early age. Known for his intense curiosity and intelligence, he displayed a fascination with technology and space at a young age. May recalls how he would spend hours reading, often diving into complex subjects well beyond what other children his age were exploring. She encouraged his curiosity, allowing him to pursue his interests even if they seemed unconventional or challenging. It wasn't always easy, as Elon's ideas often required resources that weren't readily available. However, May did her best to support his aspirations and make him feel that his dreams were valid and achievable. As Elon grew older, his interest developed into a clear vision. He moved to the United States and quickly began establishing himself as an entrepreneur in the tech industry. She understood that Elon's drive was an extension of the independence and curiosity she had encouraged. May's influence on him was evident in his fearless approach to tackling problems, from electric cars to space exploration. 
Kimball, May's middle child, took a different path. While Elon was immersed in the world of technology, Kimball was drawn to food and sustainability. Kimball has a warm, approachable personality and is deeply empathetic, qualities that set him apart and gave him a unique perspective on business. May noticed his inclination toward connecting with people and building communities, which would later play a pivotal role in his career. After initially working alongside Elon in tech ventures, Kimball eventually shifted his focus toward the food industry as he became passionate about creating a sustainable food system and founded the Kitchen Restaurant Group, a chain of community-focused restaurants. But his influence extended beyond restaurants he co-founded Big Green, a non-profit that builds learning gardens in schools, teaching children about healthy eating and sustainable agriculture. May was incredibly proud of Kimball's dedication to a cause that impacts communities in such a positive way. Tosca, May's youngest child, brought a creative spirit into the Musk family. She was imaginative, passionate and driven qualities May recognized and nurtured from an early age. Tosca's interest in storytelling and film was evident as a child, and May did everything she could to support her daughter's creative endeavors. Whether it was encouraging Tosca's early interest in theater or supporting her through film school, May played a pivotal role in Tosca's journey into the entertainment industry. Tosca eventually became a successful filmmaker, producing and directing films and TV series. In 2017, she co-founded Passionflix, a streaming service dedicated to romance films and adaptations of popular romance novels. May was always supportive of Tosca's creative vision and appreciated the way her daughter brought a sense of joy and passion to her work. Breaking the Silence May Musk's marriage to Errol Musk was marked by challenges and complexities that eventually led her to make the difficult decision to leave him, but at 76, Elon Musk's mother finally admits what we all suspected. The relationship, which started with promise, soon revealed a darker side that had long-term effects on her life and the lives of her children. From the very beginning, my ex-husband was showing signs of volatility, May said, adding that Errol was displaying abusive behavior as early as their honeymoon. This marked the beginning of what would become a turbulent marriage filled with episodes of physical and psychological abuse. May has not shied away from recounting the difficult aspects of her marriage, sharing details of her struggle. For years, she endured these challenges in silence, largely for the sake of her children. She tried to protect them from the worst of Errol's behavior, even as she herself dealt with the fear and trauma of an abusive partner. Errol's behavior extended beyond his relationship with May. The children also felt the impact of his harsh temperament and strict rules, which only intensified after May and Errol separated. While Errol was gentle with baby Elon, as he grew older, Elon bore the brunt of his father's behavior, enduring both physical and emotional mistreatment that left a lasting impact. Errol would sometimes unleash his frustration by imposing harsh punishments on his sons. He would assign hours of chores as a form of discipline, and his interactions with his children often involved long-winded lectures lasting three to four hours, during which he would refuse to let them respond or express themselves. Despite these challenges, Elon and his younger brother Kimball initially chose to live with their father after the divorce. May respected their decision, even though she knew it would be difficult for them. She understood that they wanted to know their father better and possibly connect with him in a way they couldn't during the marriage. However, living with Errol turned out to be an incredibly taxing experience for both boys. They quickly found themselves subjected to Errol's strict control and harsh expectations. For Elon, this period was particularly trying. Errol had high expectations for his son and would use harsh tactics to enforce discipline. His methods went beyond typical parental guidance. Elon has spoken about how his father's constant lectures were exhausting as they often involved belittling remarks or criticisms. Errol's authoritative style of parenting left little room for the boys to express their opinions or emotions, and the environment at home became one where they felt stifled rather than nurtured. May watched 
as her children endured these challenges, feeling helpless at times, but determined to be there for them in any way she could. She knew that the choice to stay with their father was one they had made with hope, and she wanted to support their decision, even if it meant witnessing their pain from a distance until they eventually returned to her. Is this everything May was hiding? Let us know in the comments.